Welcome again to Manmo Podcast. This is Quarantines, Part 4. Today we'll talk about three new things. They are virus paranoia, masks, and the animals of quarantine. We are now almost six months in quarantine, yet the future is still unclear when we will have a cure, or at least a vaccine. The stricter MECQ is back in Metro Manila and is also the start of the rain season. Uh, sounds depressing, but maybe there's a silver lining despite all these. Have you ever felt very scared when news or updates of the pandemic comes up? Or have you accepted that this is the fate and change your view of life? It's undeniable that everyone in the connected world knows about the virus and how deadly it is to humans. And with over 18 million cases and 700,000 deaths, it is really a disease not to be taken lightly. With some people thinking that it's like a seasonal flu and will go away, well, it's still here and it's also the first time in a hundred years that we have another pandemic. It's scary, but it's still different from the zombie apocalypse that we've seen in movies. Though it does spread fast, it puts people in pain, and it's also deadly. This has triggered many of us to be very cautious, from hoarding to bizarre disinfection methods. Many have done many things just to prevent being infected or contaminated. This led to the supply shortage of alcohol, masks, and bleach. Not only it affected supplies, but also the mental health of many, as we're not used to being stationed in our homes for long periods. It has also affected us mentally. Many have admitted to experience depression due to the problems caused by the pandemic. Some had extreme anxiety with the unstable future ahead of us. I can also admit I might also have times of anxiety. It's because of the rise in cases, the loss of income opportunities, and the confinement in such a small space, which contributed to those conditions. Although, I cannot imagine the situation of others who are living in worse conditions. The paranoia does creep up to everyone because everything is disrupted. If you feel or experience any of these, I hope you reach out for help. It may be a family or a friend which can at least listen to what you are going through. Professional help can also be a good option and can also determine the specific condition you are in. For now, I hope you find consolation despite these times. Let's get through this all together. Let's have a breather first and take a break. When we come back, let's talk about masks. This is the Manual Podcast. Hi, I'm MPJ from Manual Blogs. I love to share knowledge and stories. That's why I tried out podcasting. And I found the best app for that, Anchor. First of all, Anchor is free. They also have all the creation tools you need to record your podcast right from your phone or computer. They will also distribute your podcast in many platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. They have everything you need to get started. Amazing, isn't it? So go ahead and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back. Now let's talk about masks. No, not those masks worn by superheroes in virus comic universes, but those that protect the mouth and nose from being infected by the virus. You can also consider those cloth masks that provide protection and still reduce infection. Almost all governments in the world promote masks as a safety precaution, yet there are some who think that this is something that take away their rights. It seems very basic, but why hide that mask? Well, masks are intended to prevent infection via droplets made from the mouth and the nose via coughing or sneezing. It works both ways for an infected person not to spread the disease and an infected person not to get the disease. Yet, 
there are so many people that don't grasp this simple logic and even link to conspiracy theory to support this idiocracy. We have seen the Karens of the US who believe that the masks are something that controls them. They refuse to wear the mask, think the pandemic is a hoax, and gather in large crowds without care of being infected. As many establishments require the use of masks to protect their clients and employees, these Karens cause ruckus when they refuse to put masks for health reasons. And this does not help in controlling the disease as the U.S. still leads in the highest infections with over 4 million. Here in the Philippines, there is a different kind of mentality which also prevents masks from doing their job. That is the improper use of masks by many. Many don't value masks as much to wear them properly. Some have their nose hanging out which is a high risk of infection. I know that having masks makes it hard to breathe, but that's why it is effective. It is something that we can adjust for a meantime to ensure our safety. If it's really hard to breathe using the mask, that means you're not fit to even go outside. Else, seek help from others in doing other tasks. If you really want to contribute to eradicate this disease, masks are the most important thing that we can at least do along with hand washing. If we really want to end this soon, a small act of responsibility to wear masks can go a long way. And this is just temporary. Masks save lives, our health workers, and even the economy. So don't be a dick or a carrot. Up next, the animals of quarantine. Let's have a lighter last segment with the animals of quarantine. We usually have our pets all day long at home, but now they are our companions during this long lockdown period. We now experience what it's like now to be confined in spaces not as free as we used to be. Now it seems to be the best time to have a pet. Having them on your side and sometimes a great companion, especially when away from family and friends. Fortunately for me, as much I want to keep one, I feel I won't be able to provide all it needs and also my mom is allergic to pets. Though I have a fascination with cats and their unpredictable nature. I also love dogs but I might not be able to keep up with their energy. Some of my friends have fish pets for their aquariums that were heavily invested from tanks, sand, rocks, etc. Some can even cover an entire cottage fund for a child. Same goes with another friend who collects tarantulas, exotic yet amazing animals, which started like a grain of rice, then can grow up to a feet or more. Luckily, they are not as dangerous like spiders, which have more fatal venom. They're actually fun to feed, they're low maintenance, and they give you a more expanded understanding of the animal kingdom. And there are more exotic pets which also made headlines, like the runaway ostriches in a subdivision in Kansas City, which looked like a pursuit in Jurassic Park. There were several videos of the ostriches trying to get away and almost got past the gate. Maybe it doesn't have a quarantine pass. Though also dangerous, ostriches are powerful to kill when provoked. That's one pet you don't want to piss off. Eventually, they were all captured, yet their fate and the owners remain a mystery. Another mystery is what we will feature next on Quarantines. So thank you for listening. And always, don't forget to follow me at FBJJR on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. This has been the Manly Podcast. Have a great day. Thank you.